Yeah, what's so exciting about photo and video in medicine is that idea that the doctor will see you now is in your pocket. I agree. It's time. I agree. The farm companies are coming on. BCG's out. Their consultants have done what they need to do. They're starting to make decisions. They're moving forward. It's exciting. It's great. GE's looking at how can we make a platform. Let's get digital in. Like, industry's coming on. It's happening. Uh, IBM is going to use that huge data set uh, to train its Watson uh, deep learning system uh, to recognize uh, diseases, not just cancer, um, but they're going to uh, work uh, this deep learning, these neural networks um, on chest scans and mammograms with the promise of being able to detect uh, uh, cancer and uh, other pathological tissues at uh, much earlier stages and much smaller uh, sizes. The IBM's testing Watson at the Cleveland Clinic and at New York's uh, Memorial Sloan Kettering. Well, we've seen some um, interesting uh, partnerships develop over the last few years. AstraZeneca, Pfizer, and Novartis are continuing to evaluate uh, digital health initiatives across drug discovery, clinical trial management, and medical diagnosis. Uh, GSK and Pfizer are collaborating with uh, Apple for use of uh, Apple's uh, research kit in clinical trials. Biogen and uh, Fitbit are partnered up using wearables in clinical trial management. Teva Pharmaceuticals is partnering with American Well uh, to use its uh, smart inhalers for patients with asthma and COPD. Uh, the tie-up between Proteus and um, Otska uh, for uh, a, a, a digital health version of uh, the antipsychotic Abilify uh, to confirm that the patients have actually taken the medication and, and are compliant. The uh, sensor transmits a signal to a patch that uh, the patient is wearing, confirming that the drug has been uh, taken. Um, the, the new drug is called MySight, the drug with the sensor, and that was approved by the FDA uh, just uh, this month. So say for epilepsy, something that doesn't show up with you to the doctor's office, it's never going to happen in front of them, it happens at home, it happens here and there. If you have that experience, you have to go into what they call an epilepsy monitoring unit. We did a study with all three, Mayo's, Yale, Penn, Brown, Baylor, UCSF, and University of Southern Florida looking at home video head-to-head -head with epilepsy monitoring units. If, if, if you just think through what we should have been done or should be doing to, to cope with all these you know, different um, you know, algorithms for every single medical problem, um, we simply cannot. Again, I, I repeat myself here. Um, uh, we do invest into two main AI-related issues, which is the medical curation. I mean, to have a data set up and then creating the ground truth, what you need to do for that is to make sure that the clinical outcome of that potential sign and feature you see in that x-ray is being associated, i.e. that little teeny tiny white spot in the lung, you know, over, over time will, will either develop into a cancer or won't, and that is what you have to, to put back into. That is what we are investing. That is where we are putting our money. So what we would like to build is uh, algorithms or models that learn the parameters through examples and then are able to predict um, the task or what object is in an image in an image that has not been used for learning the parameters. The black box issue of machine learning is a major gargantuan issue in healthcare. Um, so if you have a system that you don't quite understand, but it seems to prompt forth, let's say, the best recommendations for e-commerce products to purchase, um, even if you don't quite get how it arrived at that answer, so long as you're making more money, who actually really cares that much? Um, but when you're diagnosing people with cancer, a lot of people care a lot. Uh, and it's very, very challenging to sort of have a black box machine come up with diagnoses or make important decisions about patients. I don't know, you know maybe whatever, 70% of men here, at the age of 55, we all go through our PSA kind of threat, uh, prostate cancer threat, which doesn't mean anything, literally not at all. And then we will be referred to the, to, to the urologist and then... Most likely, 50% um, of those will go through an unneeded biopsy, which is not only costly, it is not only painful, but in 50% of those cases, you'll get an infection after that. That means um, a lot of additional you know, 
adverse events will happen as well. The other major issue that we see in terms of a friction point of adopting machine learning and AI in the healthcare space uh, is sort of complex stakeholder relationships. This is a little bit simpler in the pharma world, uh, but selling into healthcare broadly a lot of the time involves a lot of stakeholders at once. Um, if, if I'm selling some kind of a marketing software, I sort of have a person who, if they understand the ROI, could buy and I could get a deal closed. Um, in hospitals, we might sell to sort of the upper echelon of the hospital. We might need doctors to apply it, nurses to be trained on it, uh, and patients to benefit from it. And if anybody in that long, ugly chain sort of wants to clamp up and, and isn't all that receptive, it makes it very hard to actually adopt these technologies. We can connect this person to a clinical trial that fits his case, where basically um, the pharma company is paying for it. The field continues to enjoy robust growth. And uh, I think an indication of that is uh, you look at the, uh, the number of uh, AI uh, patents that have been issued by the USPTO, so the lower blue line, and the number that have been filed, uh, the upper green line. And what we see is an inflection point at uh, 2014. 2014 is uh, right around the time when graphic processing units, which most of us are more familiar with probably from games, um, became uh, truly powerful and uh, more widely available for uh, people to fiddle about with. Typically, uh, you'd be looking for one disease or uh, one condition. So you're looking for a fracture uh, of an arm bone, uh, let's say, in computer-aided diagnostics. The uh, neural uh, networks uh, uh, provide the uh, potential to look at multiple disease states uh, simultaneously, as well as to collate and uh, work with data from uh, uh, treatment regimens um, and disease monitoring and bring that all together in somewhat of a customizable experience uh, for the patient. What do I mean when I say neural networks? a uh, very uh, simplified uh, outline. So an input layer, uh, this may be a, a radiologic scan. Uh, it goes into a hidden layer where an operation is performed on the data. And that operation may be as simple, let's say you're, you're looking at uh, cancer or you're looking for cancer. Um, is this uh, tissue uh, normal tissue? Uh, yes, no. Uh, if it's yes, maybe you go to the output layer. If it's no, it goes to the second hidden layer, and there's more data applied. Uh, there are uh, different functions applied to it until you eventually get to the output layer. Look at the um, diseases where compliance is um, really almost a fundamental social responsibility, because if you're not compliant, you become a laboratory for creating resistant species. Um, now, what if we're what if we're doing this for uh, for antivirals, for anti HIV medications, anti tuberculosis uh, medications, um, any sort of a, uh, communicable um, infectious disease of the community, and confirming that people uh, are compliant? Okay, so back to our ethical concerns, privacy and intrusiveness, but look at the the potential for extending. The, uh, the lifespans of our existing drugs rather than consigning um, everything to be uh, thrown off of the truck because it's no longer effective against certain pathogens.